Hey everybody and welcome back to the Flats Class YouTube channel. Uh, I just got a text. I was talking to one of my neighbors up there and then I got a text uh, from one of my clients that I'm fishing later this month and he sent me this picture right here. Yeah, that was a banana. That's right. So you can only imagine that this video is going to be about dispelling some of the myths or misconceptions or untruths that plague or get in the head of inshore anglers. So let's attack this one at a time. had to share that picture with you in the intro clip just because you know Dale Dale's kind of a wise guy when it comes to that and he's an avid fisherman probably fishes three or four days a week and he always brings bananas and he catches fish um, but that whole text exchange back and forth with him and I got me thinking how do we as inshore anglers let that get in our head and we do let it get into our head um, it doesn't have to be a banana. That's just kind of a common uh, deal with with many fishermen. It could be I don't I don't have my lucky fishing hat. I don't have my favorite fishing rod. I don't have my lucky lure. Uh, that type of mentality is what will defeat you if you think that something that trivial could keep fish from biting or yourself from catching them. That would be the first the first misconception or myth that I'd like to dispel. The second one is if dolphins are around, bottlenose dolphins, porpoise, whatever, you're not going to catch any fish. That is not true. In many cases, if they're around, there's a pretty good shot that you're going to be in the zone where the fish live. Uh, they typically won't hang around for very long. They come through a zone, and as long as that zone uh, is, a, is an area where anglers that live near there don't feed the dolphins their bait or anything, the dolphins will tire of you quite quickly and move on. The pod will move on, and, and you guys will know that because they were there and they crashed around in a little bit of mullet or something like that, that that's probably a high activity zone for them where they usually prey on on fish and you're going to catch them too i mean i see it as a positive more than i see it as a negative now number three would have to be voices don't talk you gotta whisper that is not true you can talk as loud as you want on the boat don't scream what puts fish off as far as sound goes is clomping your feet on the deck, slamming hatches. Uh, if you have a stereo system where you've got speakers in the boat, those can amplify through the hull and make noise. But if you're just talking in normal con uh, conversational uh, voices, you are not spooking any fish. Your voice can't penetrate the surface tension of the water and put the fish off. Now, do I think it's a good idea? You should be focused and not wasting your time talking and you should be looking and listening? Absolutely. So those are three right there. Now, what do you think the next three are? Number four, trolling motors keep you from catching fish in inshore fisheries. That's not true. That's not true at all. I fished on a competitive redfish series back in the day for almost 11 years. And in most of those competitions, we were on a trolling motor and we whacked fish. Um, if you run a trolling motor irresponsibly, of course it could spook fish. The same goes for if you're push pulling and you're making too much noise going into the bottom or pulling the pole out and splashing the surface, that can make a lot of noise too. So trolling motors costing anglers fish not true. That's not it. Uh, here's another one. 
the first day, two, three after the full moon suck. You're not going to catch any fish. The fish are eating throughout the night. They're eating all night long, so they're not hungry. That's not true. They eat on bright moons, but they eat at night in dark moons too. Fish see so well that a lot of the feeding activity is at night. In fact, full moon fishing, either a few days before or a few days after, can be really good because that's when you have some of your strongest tides. Now, you may have to fish a little bit differently. Um, some professional guides would tell you that you'd be better off fishing later in the day after they get hungry again. But again, these are just misconceptions. I do fine. I mean, I don't get to pick when I get the fish. So I would say that the, the tides or the fish are affected on the full moon and the days following the full moon cost you a lot of fish? No, no. Um, in tarpon fishing, it actually moves fish greater distances because the tides are so strong. So that's not necessarily true. So get that one out of your head as well. Cold fronts shut fish down where they don't feed. That's not true. That's not true at all. In fact, uh, in many cases, cold fronts actually kick the bite off. It's what you needed to get the fish going. Now, I'm not talking about extreme freezes that drop water temperature 10, 15 degrees. I'm just talking about cold fronts in general. Many times, cold fronts are what you're looking for as an inshore angler to get the bite going. Um, the fish get set in a pattern, and once they acclimate to that temperature, well, their, their metabolism, they're going to feed regardless. You might have to fish a little deeper. You might have to fish in a zone uh, where there might be springs or some warmer water in a cove somewhere with some dark bottom on it. You might have to fish a little bit later in the day. But fish definitely feed through cold fronts. So don't think, oh, well, cold front came through. We're going to wash our trip out. We're not going to go fishing. That would be a mistake. That is a misconception and a big myth. Uh, the other big myth is you have to throw big baits to catch big fish. Now, I'm a big proponent of throwing larger lures, but that's more or less so that I don't have to catch smaller fish. So I catch a lot of big fish on big swim baits like the Z-Man Hercules bait. But I will tell you right now that elephants eat peanuts. I learned this a long time ago, that those little Ned rigs and little bucktail jigs catch plenty of big snook. They catch plenty of bull redfish. So do not think that you have to throw big baits to catch big fish. You can definitely throw smaller baits. Now, you might be nuisanced by catching so many small fish with those little lures. But I can tell you for sure, don't fall into the trap thinking big baits catch big fish all the time. Because it's not true. That's another myth busted right there. What do you think's next? Fishing is outstanding as the front arrives and the pressure starts to drop. It's like, you gotta go that day. If you don't go that day, you're missing out on an epic bite. That's not true. That's not true. In fact, what I have found over decades of fishing is the fact that, yes, the barometer moves and it moves the fish. If you're not savvy on where they're moving and you're going to your glory holes, typically you strike out. And then the window to catch said fish during this big pressure drop as the front comes in, well, that window is small and you're going to be battling wind, cloud cover, and probably even precipitation in many cases. So the idea that you need to fish before the big front gets here right on it, that's not necessarily true for epic fishing. It really isn't. I would much rather fish post front most of the time after the weather stabilizes. That's when the fish become a lot more predictable and are typically in those spots that you generally find them all the time. Because when you get those extreme conditions, lots of times it pushes too much water in or blows too much water out and your fish are not where you expect them to be. Well, and it's an epic fail instead of an epic win. Fish are all on the same page. Let's just say you're out and you're struggling. You can't catch them. And maybe you even dial up a buddy, phone a friend, and they're like, oh yeah, fishing sucks. Can't catch any. I promise you, they are biting somewhere. 
Not every redfish and every speckled trout thinks like all the others. They do not. You might have to change your game up. You might have to fish deeper. You might have to move further inside a river. You might have to make some changes to make the bite happen. But somewhere, there's a bite happening. And I can tell you that because when I used to fish, again, in competitive tournaments, when you are against some of the best of the best, these guys are getting paid to catch fish. And they've been practicing for weeks leading up to this event. They figure out a way to catch them, even when, well, the bite sucks because not all the fish are going to be in the same place. The fish that you're targeting on a flat, well, they might not be there, but the fish that live at that bridge, they're probably going to be there. The fish that live at the jetty, they're probably going to be there. Dock fishing, there's so many places that are wide and varied where these fish behave differently. You cannot say that they're all on the same page because a front is approaching or has just passed by or you've just got extreme wind or something. Someone's going to be catching them somewhere because feed, fish feed because they're hungry. They're hungry or, well, that leads me to this next one. Lots of times we think the only way to catch fish is if they're hungry. So you might be thinking, and this is... This might be the last one, but you're thinking, okay, these fish are going to move up the flat. There's a lot of birds up there, and they're going to start mowing down on worms, crabs, shrimp, whatever. And all that is true. But there are many times certain species are trying to fend off other fin fish from getting in their territory. Uh, trout and snook are prolific for having this type of behavior. You'll find snook will attack needlefish. They'll just, they'll wreck them. Um, not because they want to eat them so much as they want to just eliminate them as the competition for eating the same silver side minnows or rain minnows that are in the water, the little sizzle bait. They want to take them out. So they're not even eating them for the fact that they're hungry. They're eating them because they're pissed. That's right. And larger trout, how many times have you caught a big, well, it doesn't happen all the time, but I've caught big trout that have smaller trout in their belly, or they're choking one down, or they've attacked one. And the reason they do this is because they look at those smaller trout, even though it's the same species, as competition. So they take them out. So all fish do not, do not feed just because they're hungry. Lots of time, it's a reaction bite. Lots of time, it's to eliminate competition. And if you're savvy to that, it will help you catch more fish. I've got to get back to getting the boat um, tooled up here for tomorrow. I just want to go through my last bit of my checklist. But speaking of checklists, if these 10 myths or misconceptions, <laughs> now my, my dog's chasing something, but these 10 myths or misconceptions, if, if you can discount these 10, I think men mentally you will be in a better position to catch more fish. If you enjoy these type of videos, uh, we do them about every other day here at Flats Class YouTube. Please hit the subscribe button right there. I want you to subscribe. I want you to share these videos. I want you to tell your friends because the more of you that are watching this channel, the better chance I have of getting more and more of you in my classroom. And I'm here only to make you a better inshore angler. All right, let me get back to uh, putting things under the gunnel here and I'll catch you guys next, next time here on the channel.